What was the largest apartment ever built in New York City? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. In the late 1800s, Henry Villard, the president of the Northern Pacific Railway, set out to build Manhattan's largest apartment, but no existing buildings could accommodate his vision. He purchased a lot along Madison Avenue in Midtown Manhattan and hired the prominent Gilded Age architecture firm of McKim, Mead & White to design a custom, luxury apartment building. The Renaissance Revival-style building was designed around a central courtyard with plenty of space for horse-drawn carriages to drop residents off at their front doors. Each unit consisted of three main floors with their own basements and attics and boasted unique layouts so that no two of the six units were the same. Of course, Henry Villard wanted his to be the largest and the most expensive. His 35,720 square foot apartment cost a whopping $1 million just to construct the interior, with an additional $250,000 being spent on furnishings. All total, that is the modern day equivalent of nearly $40 million just to finish out the interior. Shortly after its completion, Henry declared bankruptcy and the apartment changed hands to the Reed family, who purchased it for less than half of what Henry had paid to have it finished. They hired Stanford White of the same architecture firm to make it more to their own taste, and the results? Well, let's just go inside and see. Entering the apartment from the courtyard, we arrive in the vestibule, with marble-clad walls and a tile mosaic floor. Turning around, we can begin making our way up the marble staircase towards the main living area on the second floor. At the landing, stained glass windows allow a myriad of colors to reflect from the polished marble surfaces. In fact, several of the stained glass windows we will see were designed by Louis Comfort Tiffany. Above us, the ceiling is coffered with carved marble rosettes in each section. We can pass through the arcade to arrive in the entrance hall. Stepping into the entrance hall, we begin to gain a sense of just how large this apartment is. Above us, the groin vault is clad in stamped leather with a floral motif, and the door surrounds, arcing into the vaults, have an elaborate mosaic of varying tile sizes, with the largest of the tiles being hand-carved from marble and creating an ensemble of figurative relief work. The door surrounds are no less impressive, once again, with artisan relief work carved from solid marble. We can make our way through the first set of doors and begin exploring the apartment. First, we will see the music room, finished out in painted, hand-stenciled wood paneling below damask wallpaper. The coffered, barrel-vaulted ceiling rises nearly three stories with a minstrel gallery in its mezzanine, the balustrade of which is supported by gilded corbels. We can now turn back around and make our way through the double doors to continue exploring the apartment. The library was finished out with floor-to-ceiling wood paneling below a gilded, coffered ceiling. On its window wall, the bookshelves would have once housed a large collection of rare and antique literature. But that's not all there is to the library. We can continue through an oak door to find the study. It was designed in the Gothic style with tracery patterns above its bookcases. And on the ceiling, a clean, geometric pattern is broken up by the most subtle of hand stenciling. At the end of the entrance hall, we will find the drawing room. Unfortunately, Photos of this space were only taken as the apartment was being stripped of its artisan details, but more on that in a moment. Looking at what remains, we can get a pretty good idea of what this room once looked like. Let's start by looking down at the parquet wood floors. Then, let's bring our attention to the ceiling, which would have glistened in golden hues from its gold leaf plaster details. On the walls, the plasters once framed elaborate wall murals, which were carefully removed. Here is just one of those hand-painted panels, which was able to be removed in one piece without cracking. The dining room, measuring 60 feet long, could have comfortably accommodated 40 dinner guests at the same table. The ceiling was clad in painted leather, appearing dark and dull, just barely hinting at a pattern above gas-powered lamps. The parquet wood floors are beyond intricate, with tiny, wood tiles measuring as small as a quarter of an inch in width. Let's keep looking at pictures of the apartment while we find out what happened to it and why it was missing so many pieces in all of these photos. The apartment changed hands many times over the years, with each family adding their own touches. But eventually, the real estate just became too valuable to hold on to as a residence. The entire building was slowly bought out by the Catholic Archdiocese, and eventually, 
All six of the apartments were converted into offices. When the building was converted, each apartment was stripped of its artisan and architectural elements, which were cataloged and auctioned off. The church sold the building, and its many rooms were further reconfigured to accommodate business offices. Then, most recently, a massive addition was added onto the original building, and it reopened as a hotel. But in all of this, not all was lost. There is still a handful of original rooms left intact, including the music room, which currently houses a restaurant. So what do you think? Was 451 Madison Avenue the largest apartment to ever be built in New York City? And did you have a favorite room? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.